Hey there, in this video we are going to look at a method called partial factoring and use it to find the vertex of a quadratic function and then write the function in vertex form. Let's do that right now. So partial factoring, another alternate method of finding the vertex of a quadratic function, what it essentially involves is knowing that a quadratic function is symmetric, it's about symmetric how I've drawn it there, but if you know two x values for uh, the same y value, then you know that the vertex has to be halfway in between those two and you can use it to find the find both coordinates of that vertex. So it involves finding those two points. Now you might as well make it as simple as possible for yourself when you're doing that because from standard form it's pretty easy to find the y-intercept. So if you know your y-intercept is 2, you're going to use this partial factoring idea to find the other point that's on the other side of the thing. And, uh, and then you can use that to find that middle point there. All right. So what it involves is substituting a value in here. And the value you're going to substitute is that y-intercept. So if I put a 2 in there, now I'm not putting 0 in there. I'm putting 2 in there because I want to find that other point for the y-intercept. And what's going to happen here is if I now take two away from both sides of this thing because I need to make it um, zero if I'm going to try solving by factoring or anything like that I get zero is x squared minus 4x so basically what I'm doing is I'm just factoring this part of it it's called partial factoring because you're only factoring that part essentially you're eliminating the other part now what that's going to tell me here is that I can always factor out a common factor of x if I do it right if I choose the y-intercept to sub in as my y-value, then I'm always going to get it to look like that, right? To have that common factor of x. And that's going to tell me that the two values here, one of them is 0, one of them is 4. Those two values of x give me that value of y that I put in. I put in y equals 2 because it was my y-intercept, and I got that x was these two values. If I know that those two values have the same y-value, then I know the vertex has to be halfway in between that, right? If the numbers are easy to work with like this, obviously 0 and 4, you know the halfway point is 2. That's where your vertex is. That's the x-coordinate of the vertex. And if I sub that in to the original function, then I can find the y-coordinate of the vertex, right? So if I then say I'm going to take that number squared minus 4 times that number plus 2, I'll use red just to emphasize what I'm doing here, subbing that number in, and then work it out. 4 minus 8 plus 2, that gives me minus 4 plus 2, which gives me minus 2. That's the y-coordinate of the vertex. This is the x-coordinate of the vertex. This is the y-coordinate. And then I can write it in vertex form even, right? If I know that the vertex is x is 2, this is going to be x minus 2 in my vertex form. I'm going to have minus 2 outside there. And then the a value is just the same as what it was. So it's just a 1, which I don't even have to write. That's the vertex form of that thing. All right, let's try another one here. If we're going to do partial factoring on that thing, uh, we're going to substitute in the y-intercept, which is 1. Or in other words, we're just going to Put that in, and then if we uh, if we make this zero, those two things cancel out, right? If I move that over, it turns into plus one. I get zero here. In other words, if I add one to both sides, right? If I start simplifying that equation, I get this. If I factor that, it has x as a common factor, and I get 5x plus 16. You're always going to get zero for one of them because it was the y-intercept. You chose the y-intercept to sub in, so you're always going to get zero as one of them. But what you're interested in is the other one so that you can find that mirror image point and then you can find the halfway in between. So maybe we want to do a little bit of solving here. 5x plus 16 equals zero. So 5x equals negative 16. So x is negative 16 over 5, where if you divide that, negative 3.2. So you have two points here, 0 and negative 3.2. Now, what, what we're looking for again is if those two points have the same y value of negative 1, then our vertex has to be halfway in between those two. So if you can see what's halfway in between there, 
halfway between 0 and negative 3.2 is negative 1.6, or just add them and divide by 2. Um, if I have negative 1.6, there is my x coordinate of my vertex. Then I can find my y coordinate of my vertex by substituting it in. I'll do it really fast here for you. So I have negative 13.8 is my y coordinate of my vertex. So then I can say that the vertex is negative 1.6, negative 13.8. So we've got, that's our vertex, and then not much room here, but if I was trying to write the thing in vertex form, I could do it again uh, by just using those two values. It is, if it's negative 1.6, you have x plus 1.6 in here. I have minus 13.8 on the end. And my a value is the same as the a value there, it's 5. All right, so that is partial factoring. The idea of substituting in the y-intercept, and it clears out the number on the other side. You're left with just the x squared and the x term. You factor it. You find two values. The One is the y-intercept, and one is the mirror image point of it. And finding the halfway point, and using that to find the y-coordinate of the vertex. All right, that's it.